Okay, this is the solar part of the EMP shield. So um, we are using the solar edge inverter. Um, I have schematics that I'll put up on the screen. I'm just gonna show you real quick what I'm doing here with the EMP shield. The EMP shield, I wanted to go with um, where it was basically mounted to something other than the inverter. That way, if uh, any service to the inverter was needed, a replacement, um, it was just a quick disconnect. Uh, and I used the uh, gray conduit that you use when installing a, a heat pump for the electrical to that. So basically, with, from the electrical box to the heat pump, I used what was left over from that because I had extra. So it just made sense to me to, to do it this way. However, that's all outside, un, you know, underwater rate, well, water rated, and you really don't need to do this, but it's just something I had, and uh, it just seemed to work well for me. So there I am just checking to make sure I'm not in front of the camera like my other video, uh, <clears throat> although that is difficult sometimes. But we're just mounting it to the wall using a hammer drill and some masonry screws. All right, um, I'm just taking the, the panel off. Uh, so I want to make sure that this is set to off, otherwise you're not going to get the faceplate off. Uh, after you've done that, you've noticed I've thrown a schematic up here that's directly from EMP Shield. And uh, th this obviously is not going to be the schematic for the actual inverter that we're installing, but it does make important notes. And that is, got to notice your red is positive, your black is negative, and your green is ground. Very important here when installing uh, on a solar system, you have to pay attention to red and black because the polarities do matter. So just something to keep in mind as we get into this install. Okay, and here you can see that I have the solar edge schematic for this in a specific inverter. And what I'm doing right now is I'm pointing out again the positive and the negative, very important. And the schematic shows you which side is the DC side and which side is the AC side. Uh, luckily, there was this little thing in the middle that kind of separates the two and it makes it really easy. I'm going to bring you in for a close-up. As you can see, the solar company took the liberty of marking the lines. So there we have red uh, for the positive, and then, of course, they mark brown for the negative, although they probably didn't have to do that, but uh, helpful nonetheless. So now we're going to get into, uh, I'm just going to attach the tube, get, get everything set up for an actual install. So let's just wait and uh, we'll get that out of the way.
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the ground. So I just have to loosen a screw on the ground bus bar and essentially make room for it. And uh, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the, um, the, the wiring. Uh, you, only, you only need a little bit. So I'm just gonna take off the insulation and, and then install the ground bar. I'm gonna twist the ends because it is braided wire. I like twisting the ends just so it's easier to get in there. All right, so here I've added the schematic that's just basically telling you how you're going to get this wire out of here. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a small screwdriver that you need to be able to get in there and push in. Basically, you push in and it releases the wire. And once that wire is released, you can pull that out of there. It does take some doing, as you can see, where I haven't really fully released it. So it's going to take a couple of tries. Don't force it, but at the same time, be persistent, and it should come right out just like that. Now that I have it apart, um, one of the things I had to do was make sure, because I'm, I'm splicing these wires in, that I wasn't exceeding the gauge uh, that, that, that this was taking. So essentially, that little port that I took that out of, you have to make sure that you don't exceed the, gauge, uh, the, the wire gauge that's allowed for that. And even though I hadn't, in the future, I'm probably going to use the pigtail method in terms of attaching these wires. So again, this is a splice, but what uh, you should probably do is just do the pigtail. Um, for pigtails, you might want, you, you can use a wire nut or you can use the push, push in connectors. For that, I'm gonna recommend that you solder um, the, the wires. But um, that's something that uh, you know, you're gonna have to decide for yourself on how to approach it. But as you can see, I'm just putting these wires together, I'm splicing them together, and then I'm gonna put that wire back in the port. Uh, again, I did not exceed the wire gauge uh, requirement for this port, and it is something that you do need to pay attention to. Here, I'm just gonna snip a little bit off because uh, the lines were made a little bit longer, and I just, you know, I don't want too much sticking out. I don't want too much of that line. Um, I actually don't have any allowed that where I can see it, where there could possibly be a short. So um, that's the positive side that I'm doing first, and then of course I'm gonna do the negative side. Once that's been done, of course, this will be hooked up. Again, this is EMP Shield 
um, the solar inverter protector. Um, this will protect against lightning strikes. This will protect against, of course, a CME and, of course, what they're known for, an EMP.
so this will if you're wondering what this is going to protect you from if uh, your solar solar panels are hit by an EMP they're typically not affected however this inverter would be affected by any charge that builds up and of course the EMP shield is going to monitor this uh, this line for any type of buildup and of course if there is a buildup it's going to shunt anything that uh, any type of surge right to ground sa hopefully saving this inverter so in the event of an EMP you can go on as if nothing happened of course this is a passive device it will not void any warranties at least that's what EMP shield has stated and that is what uh, my company Tesla has stated uh, that is, you know it's just something that's there to monitor and protect the device it is an insurance policy that I highly recommend so this is the install for the solar part using for for the solar edge inverter uh, for the EMP shield I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY I hope that you enjoyed this video and uh, you know if you have any questions please feel free to send them to me again something that I always say is these videos are for entertainment purposes only uh, if you do not know what you're doing with electrical, if you do not what you're, if you do not know what you're doing inside of these t this type of equipment, you should of course refrain from doing it. You shouldn't get involved in it. You should hire a licensed professional who can come out and make these installs for you. Again, I'm Joel with Dissecting DIY. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Tell me what you think.